Uh, and it, it was huge. It was huge. And the other big thing, what was so, another big thing that was so important about it was that everybody could drive there and could park there. And that kind of showed how um, people were start more car oriented. You had more shopping centers. Uh, people were driving to shop. Uh, Clarendon starting actually, um, now people can access Clarendon by bus. That when the trolleys faded, the buses came in. But this is still kind of hard to get around in Clarendon because you had all um, you had the split, the one-way streets. There wasn't a lot of parking. There was a lot of room. You had a lot of small, small buildings, small businesses, kind of close. And I mean, think about right now the heart of Clarendon. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of people. Uh, Boston was a little bit more open. You could put your car there and and such. Um, so again, more more towards the west. Um, check with myself. So um, now everything's more car oriented and it's changing the development of the county and the seas and everything. This is this will be pretty interesting in a minute. Uh, again this is a full county map from 1990. Um, what's interesting here is not only do you see the roads but some of these darker lines are the railway maps. So you can see how the railway maps kind of um, intersect with the roads. Here's the Arlington and uh, Washington Arlington and Falls Church Railway right here. And that's pretty much goes, you know, right down the heart here's um, and then here's the uh, Washington OD Railway. And up here is the Washington and Alexandria Mount Vernon Railway. So as you can see they all kind of come through right here through the heart of what we know now as the Roslyn Boston Corridor. Um, through the 50s, everybody's using cars to get in to Parkington, uh, not so much as Clarendon anymore, even though people were still using it a lot because people were using buses. Uh, 60s hit, and we started seeing a decline in some of these more, um, these more kind of urban type of areas. People were moving out farther and farther, and they decided to move in, and then, you know, in the 60s, when we had even bigger uh, government, more people coming into D.C., and then there's this whole, if you, Zachary Schrag, who is a associate professor of history here at Mason, put together a wonderful book called Great Society Summary. There's stuff from us in the book, and he is a, it's a wonderful history of the development and building of the metro system as a whole. Um, but I, I used his book a lot because it just had some just great insights. And then we also happen to have in the library a lot of um, documentation regarding how they planned getting the metro through through Arlington um, and how they planned out the Rosslyn Colston corridor. Um, so as it started to decline, the, the whole corridor actually started to decline as the economy started to tank um, and people were moving farther out. They're even more and more dependent on cars. Uh, Clarendon especially really started to decline. Um, and just at this time, when the metro started to come in, they knew metro had to come through Virginia. Metro's plan was to go with commuters. They're talking about commuters. Uh, we want to get commuters from the suburbs into D.C. They really weren't thinking about, oh, well, we want to get people from Cherrydale to Columbia Pike. They were thinking far, you know, and which is kind of like how it is. It's more like a, with the branches coming out as opposed to going around. Um, so. Arlington, as Zachary Schrake says, oh, Arlington thought carefully about what it wanted and got it, which is kind of like the Arlington way. Um, <laughs> you're kind of not surprised that they did this. They knew that they there was you know thought oh well we'll just go over the uh, go over I-66 or we'll go through Columbia Park, but those just didn't seem to work. What they they knew they wanted to revitalize that Wilson Boulevard spine. They knew they wanted it to get back to where it used to be. And they thought, if we put the metro there, that will help. They knew it had to be underground at that point, but that's where we can revitalize. So let's work around it. Let's use that plan. That's what we're going to do. You know, people who are like, oh, no, we want Kiss and Rides in Cherrydale. Screw you. No, this is the way we're going to do it. And if people protest, guess what? This is how we're going to do it, and it's been a long way. It's still developing. Um, there's still, you know, still see cranes, but um, there's something called in uh, 
Now this is this is actually going back into the uh, mid to or mid to late '60s. We're still in the planning stage and talking about how they wanted to put together something. And then the oh, and so you can see here the metro. They're all kind of like here's a metro. Um, <laughs> here's a metro. Like, here's Boston. Here's Clarendon. Uh, Roslyn's here. Courthouse. You know. So oh look, it's all right along the trolley lines. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> So um, the big, the big um, kind of like kickoff for Virginia, uh, or for this, the corridors development is a company called RB72. Uh, the proper name is the Rosslyn Ballstore Corridor Alternate Land Use Patterns, which is outline development scenarios. Uh, how we can put this together? How can we develop this area and um, use the metro to our best advantage to revitalize this corridor? Um, Let's see. Sing and as you can see, um, they thought of the. With it, sometimes it's called targeted development. Some of it's called bulldo um, bullseye development. Right here, metro, metro, metro. This is where the offices are. Bam, bam, bam. You can see them. You can see the development today. Actually, it's um, um, modeled on a Scandinavian model, especially Stockholm, Sweden. If you go there, that's how they did it. They saw that. So we can use that here. Um, the whole plan was. You have your offices, your high density, your really, really high buildings, really, really close into the metro. And actually, if you look, um, it's kind of like this, a way as you go away from the metro. And uh, some of them are faster than others, some of them are steeper than others. Um, and another interesting thing when they planned these, and this is for more this area specifically, each one of those five metro stations were supposed to, were supposed to have like a theme for the development. Um, and the three here, the Clarendon was supposed to be the urban village. Ballston was supposed to be the new downtown of central Arlington. And Virginia Square was, was envisioned as a educational, recreational, cultural center in the heart of Arlington. They already knew they had the library nearby. Um, one of, they, you know, that, and that, and they already had the Morris School nearby, which turned into the Arlington Arts Center. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I think the county really wanted Mason to come in. It fit the bill. It fit that educational idea right there, um, which I think is really interesting. I never knew that before until I'm reading this. I'm like, oh, I didn't know it was supposed to be themed. And you know, you can see, you know, the theme isn't always perfect, and it always isn't in it. Like, you know, it's not like perfect delineations, but you can kind of see where they were going with this. Um, and so this is some of the earliest iterations. Now here, you know, if you go to the Virginia Room, we have a lot of county publications that um, talk about the development of this plan and stuff that's right on the shelves. And it's not even in the archives. It's you know been uh, it's, it's right there, bound and you know ready for you to look at. It's a whole bunch of really interesting things. Um, and we we're really and Arlington was really uh, ahead of its time in thinking about how they really wanted to use Metro and to get the most out of, especially this corridor. Um, let's see. So, um, I'm sorry. So by the spring of 1989, you, so, oh, I'm sorry, these stations opened up in 79. You had Cannes Department Store, which, may I just mention, also had monkeys. They had monkey cages, I think, like near the kids' kid shoes. We get a ton of people going, do you have pictures of the Cannes monkey? And we say no. I mean, seriously, at this point, sometimes we think it's a figment of people's imagination. If you know anybody who has pictures of the, of can, of the cans monkeys, we want them, we want them. Seriously. We, and, and I'm not over-exaggerating. It is a, on a regular basis we get asked about that in the putt-putt that used to be next to the Boston Mall. Yeah. And we don't have pictures of the putt-putt either, oh. which makes me sad. We have pictures of the... Um, there was a picture, we, we actually have pictures of where the Quest building is now in Arlington, uh, I'm sorry, in Boston. There was a plant nursery. We have pictures of the plant nursery. We have no pictures of the putt-putt. So again, mm -hmm. pictures, if you know somebody or you have pictures of the putt-putt and you would like to donate to them, very good, we would be happy to see them all. There will be many, many people who would be very happy to see them. Or the cans ones. Or cans in general, because you have one, we have zero. It's very frustrating. Um, so, and actually, uh, Cannes, Cannes left in 75, um, and 
Yeah, yeah Kansas left in 75. Mm -hmm. By the time that shopping center, the Virginia Square Shopping Center, mm -hmm. again, shopping centers, that was all the rage you know, in the 50s. By the time the um, which Kansas, which opened in 51, 52, it actually formally opened in 52. By the time that was torn down in 89, yeah, I think it was, you know, 88, the giant was the only thing that was, yeah. that, that was open and right. actually open for business. So uh, this whole thing, I mean, because, so it kind of shows you how things were changing. Um, one other thing that I'd like to mention about this kind of like time about the Metro, uh, the, the changes that it brought, and we all know, if you've been living in Arlington for any amount of time, you know that as soon as this kind of started, um, the stat that I have is these stations, Boston, Clarendon, Virginia Square, opened in 79. A year later, Arlington's property values had raised $1 billion. So. We're talking, I mean, suddenly it was great to be in Arlington. It was wonderful to own property, to be here, to own land, have an apartment, have townhouse, whatever. Um, one of the things that was interesting that had a big effect that this development had an effect on is in Clarendon, you had Little Saigon. During, uh, in the 70s, especially the second half of the 70s, you had a lot of people coming out of Vietnam, a lot of Vietnamese leaving the country. A lot of them came to D.C. because it was close to a lot of the federal aid programs that they were already familiar with. Um, and of course, you have some. You'll get more because they're like, oh, wait, there's already community here. I want, I, you know, want more.